Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kokesh here at the grand finale, finally, of the Texas State Libertarian Party Convention. I am here with State Chair John Wilford. Very relieved after a very well-run, very well-organized convention. And this is not just the end of the main convention, this is the end of the post-executive committee convention meeting. It's been a long weekend. I'm really grateful to have his time that he's sharing with me tonight. Um, John, you've been, you know, you've been involved with this party for a long time. You were re-elected this weekend to be chair to serve a second term. And w what I'm seeing traveling the country now is just an incredible growth and invigoration of the party. Is that happening in Texas? Oh, absolutely. I mean, we've, we've seen huge, uh, I think the report from the Credentials Committee was we had 50% growth in our delegation from last convention to this convention. I mean, but you do that a few more times and you're, you're getting somewhere. Now here we're talking about 391 seats at the state convention that people have to jump through some hoops to get to in the first place. It's not like other states, right? You have some uh, state law burdens and you have some, so what does someone have to do just to be a delegate to the state convention for Texas? So each county is allotted an apportionment of delegates, and you have to campaign and compete in your county to get elected to those spots. You mentioned the 391 delegates. We had 180, I think, seven alternates who were competing for those spots and had to sit in an alternate spot because they couldn't receive a delegate spot. Has this ever happened in the history of the state party? This is the largest convention we've ever had, but we've seen this kind of growth uh, uh, even from the last convention to the one before that. So the growth is, is about what we're experiencing. The numbers are phenomenal. And you not only filled your delegation to the national convention, you had a competitive process. And how many of your alternate slots, you have 73, mm -hmm. how many of the alternates, how many registered alternates do you have for the national convention on top of your 73 delegates there? I'm not exactly sure because we had a process where people were going to sign up and then take a lottery for their position. So I would need to know how many signed up, but I'm, I'm going to guess 50 plus, if not over the, the limit of alternates we had. All right, so this is a little inside baseball kind of nerdy LP stuff, but for the growth of the party in terms of impacting the average Texan, now that they have much more, uh, many more candidates who are running on the Libertarian ticket, they have many more serious candidates, how do you see that this affects the effectiveness of the Libertarian Party to win offices and to get the message out in Texas? Well, we have great candidates. I mean, if you look at Mark Tibbetts message, he's, he's really pushing uh, uh, an alternative to the elephant donkey rhetoric we've been hearing this whole time. And we have built throughout this process the infrastructure to facilitate a professional campaign. Not, and, and he's already a professional guy, so I, I really think that we're going to have a great turnout in this next gubernatorial election. And for ballot access? Uh, we're not, uh, we're expecting to get ballot access. Uh, we have Mark Ash who needs to get 5%. He's going to blow that out of the water. I think we're fine. Now, Mark Ash is running for? Uh, Court of Criminal Appeals is either place one or place eight. One of the two. And, and that determines whether or not the party has automatic ballot access for the next election cycle, right? Any state uh, wide race, we need 5%, and that is one of them. And that means that the party is not going to have to work as hard in order to get the L on the ballot in front of everybody in the state of Texas, not just in 2018, but 2020, moving on forward from that. And it's, there, there is a sort of critical momentum element to this in most states, because this is how they keep third parties off the ballot. This is how they disadvantage, and it's not even third parties. The LP is by far the largest third party in America. We are the threat to the system. Speaking of which, I was you know, I don't want to say shocked. I was, I was more entertained than anything to hear about, about some of the di divisiveness and the division and the contention within the party of Texas. Now, you have a separate party that is deliberately trying to infiltrate and change the platform. Now, you also have the infamous Kathy Glass, who has is, is raised some contention in the party as well. Can, can you address, uh, for, first the party, uh, what was it, Texas Freedom and, what is it? Texas Freedom Political Party was an organization formed. They were basically acting as a Tea Party to what the Tea Party is to the Republican Party, to the Libertarian Party, trying to come in, put some change to the platform, and use our ballot access as a means to push their message. We are big enough to be worthy of a takeover attempt, and it failed. Why, why do you think that happened? Why, what, what do you credit that to, the strength of the party being able to prevent that from happening? I think it's the incredible growth in the message we're putting out there. I mean, people obviously showed up to this convention that we didn't know. We had 50% growth. That means one in three people in that room we didn't know, and they had a message to choose. We see what message they chose. 
Now, with Kathy Glass, I think the, her case raises some issues about uh, inclusiveness versus adherence to uh, the, the, the philosophical core message of the party. Everybody who joins the LP, when you fill out the membership form, whether it's online or in person, you check a box that says, I oppose the initiation of force to achieve political and social goals. And there's some contention that you know we have different candidates. She was a, a candidate for governor, that she didn't really have a NAP compliant or fully principled platform. And you've told me you don't think she's an infiltrator or a planner or anything like that, but there were people here who actually thought that, and, and that was a motivation to actively work against her. Of course, I would be supporting a philosophically consistent candidate, and I would want to see that. And I'm really glad that, that Mark Tippett's ended up being the nominee and not Kathy Glass, although you had two other great candidates, Corey uh, and Patrick, running for governor as well. But what do you think that says about the issues of inclusiveness versus, you know, asking for, you know, a philosophical or ideological purity? As with any of these questions, there, there, there's a, a number line that the party must choose. And we choose that with our individual votes. Some people are going to go way to, to the side of, you know, the, the purity test and others are going to be huge tent. And at the end of the day, I think that vote reflects and, and the body was most comfortable with the level of inclusiveness and NAP com compatibility and all those balancing issues that Tippett's put up. And I, I think we can look at that, look at the messages of each of those candidates and see where the party really views really fall. So you think we got a good race here, we were well, well represented, and we are still the party of principle here in Texas, correct? Absolutely. LPTexas.org? LPTexas.org. Thank you very much, John. Ladies and gentlemen, John Wilford, head of LP Texas, chairman of LP Texas. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you. And for your great work this weekend. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your post and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at thefreedomline.com and we'll share it on my feed.